Listen, my guest today is a writing consultant and corporate trainer who helps high performing leaders, professionals, entrepreneurs, and executives connect with others, package their expertise, maximize their message through storytelling. I know that's found, that sounds very interesting, right? Over the past three years, she has worked with over 400 authors to help them increase their influence and grow an expert platform through writing a book and she's in the peak through right now. Jasmine Womack. How you doing? I am good. How are you doing? All lightning I'm, bubbly. I'm great, great. Super excited to be here. I, I'm super excited that we have you here. How have you been? Are you caught in the snowstorm anywhere across the country? No, I'm in Atlanta, so it's rainy and cool outside, but no snow here. Okay. I've got some, I've got some family and friends that's been stuck down in Texas, though. Yeah, so, likewise. Yeah. Okay, cool. Atlanta, ATL. Now, are you from Atlanta? No, I'm from Columbus, Georgia, but I was I grew up in the, in the Atlanta area. Columbus, Georgia. Haven't heard yeah, of that in a long girl. time. <laughs> country girl, all day. All day and day. I'm from Atlanta, so I know about Columbus. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right, cool. So so what got you to Atlanta? Um, my parents, you know, oh. they came up to to the city looking for better job opportunities and better opportunities for me and my siblings at the time. And okay. so my dad had gotten a promotion and then my mom got a promotion. And so that's what got us up here from Columbus. I had some aunts. Basically, my mom's brothers and brothers and sisters were already living up here as well. So, okay, yeah, I can, an easy transition. I, I can hear that country girl in your voice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I can hear that Columbus in your voice right yeah, now. Yeah, it, it comes out at times. <laughs> I say the same thing about my ATL accent. You know, sometimes I'm good at hiding it. Sometimes I don't really care. Right. It it, it really comes out when I start laughing or when I get really comfortable. Then yeah. it, it comes out. Now I see <laughs> who I am. <laughs> you have an extensive library behind you. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I got you can't see them. I have books on the walls of clients that I've worked with and um my 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 personal professional library, you know, books that I've purchased to continue extend my professional and uh, my personal studies. Okay. Okay. So you are a, are you what we would consider to be a bookworm or a nerd? <laughs> a little, I think a combination of both. Combination of both. Okay. Yeah. Now, now where did that start for you? Did that start when you was a, a, a child or did that come about as you uh, grew as an adult? No, I've always been like that. I've always been into uh, books. I remember um, my grandmother had a picture of me on her refrigerator too. It was of me in the fifth grade. And so we took our school photos for the year. And this particular year, we got to pick a prop. They had props for everybody. So a lot of the girls picked dolls. A lot of the guys picked toys. They had, they had books in the crate. I was the only kid in class that picked the book. Only kid and in the class. Did, and, I, and that was when I was in fifth grade. And my grandma had that picture on her, on her um, refrigerator. And it was so funny because when I, I published my first book and had like my first real photo shoot, I was like literally almost in that same position, like in that same way. And my mom posted that fifth grade picture on Facebook. And I was like, oh, my gosh, it's just, it's just so funny how sometimes God reveals our destinies, you know, before we have any indication, you know. Absolutely. See, fifth grade for me, I'm trying to remember. I used to go in the back behind the library that we had in our classroom and, and go to sleep. So <laughs> we have two different stories. <laughs> but yeah, I was a kid. I always kept the book. Whenever we went out to eat, I always took books. I would read at the table. I was just, yeah, <laughs> that was my thing. That was your thing. So I, I guess you could say it was almost predestined for you to walk in this this uh, field that you're walking in right now with helping other people find their voice, tell their stories as well, because you've always been one that loves stories and books, right? Uh, it literally was predestined. I actually found out this past summer, you know, like in the middle of like all the protests and everything. Um, another one of my first cousins that I was estranged from during childhood, he 
posted something on Facebook and tagged me in it. And I began like just doing some research and then digging. And I was just like, oh my gosh, long story short, I found out that in 1921, my great, great grandmother on my father's side, um, who also founded the holiness, uh, the holiness ministry here in the United States, she had also built and founded a publishing company in 1921. Wow. And that's what that tagged me in. And I was just like, oh my goodness. Mm. And she had published, she created her publishing company to publish her publish her uh ministerial works. And I said, it's so funny because I'm like, what are the odds? Literally a hundred years later, you know, even though I was estranged from my blood, my biological father growing up. I'm literally continuing the work that she started a hundred mm. years ago and had no clue. And when I started my publishing company back in 2013, mm. it was because I wanted to self publish and I only wanted to publish my books. <laughs> <laughs> so to be in this position now where I am, you know, uh, fast forward, you know, years later where now I'm able to help thousands of people. It's just, it's unreal. Now, is it unreal or is it more realistic for you? I mean, it's real, but, you know, obviously it's like real, real, you know, but to find out that I'm literally continuing in the path of something mm. that my ancestors started a hundred years ago and have physical proof of it, you know? So when I say it's in me, it's literally in me. Literally in your bloodline. Yes. Okay. And I, I just found out about six months ago. Now you you spoke about were you estranged from your biological father, or he just wasn't around at all, or did he pass away at an early age? <laughs> you know, I mean, my mom was young, he was young, it was what it was, and he <laughs> wasn't involved. <laughs> I mean, my dad had like eight kids by eight different women, and we Ooh. all connected through Facebook about 10 years ago. So, you know, it was one of those, uh, not about 10, goodness, yeah, about 10, 15 years ago. So it was one of those situations where my mom was young, mm. 17, 18, he was older, she fell for it, you know, and she became one of many. And he wasn't around, he came around when I was what, in college? Okay. <laughs> so, you know, it is what it is. Now, do you have a re relationship with him now or? Yeah, yeah, we okay. talk. Yeah, and I um I have a relationship with those uh my family members on that side. So yeah. Gotcha. Now, how do you think that affected you at at, at all? And maybe you you noticed that earlier on, or maybe you, you've re recently discovered that. How do you think that disconnect in that relationship has helped or hindered you throughout your journey in becoming who you are right now? Oh, I had daddy issues, you know, growing up, like, uh, and I didn't realize it. Mm -hmm. Um. In, especially in my late teen, early 20s. And I I didn't really realize it. But then, of course, as I started maturing and started doing a lot of that self-work, I, I began to realize that I had issues with rejection because he wasn't in my life. He, you know, he would come around from time to time, but make promises, say he was coming, never show up, that type of thing. And so what it created in me was uh, a sensitivity to any type of rejection mm. that even in my adulthood will still trigger sometimes. And I have to make a mental note of where it's coming from. And like mm. that might not be reality. That's some old childhood wounds coming up, you know? So, mm. um, you know, I think we all have some type of wounds, you know, and yeah. it's just our, it's our responsibility to understand those shadowy parts of ourselves and mm. to do the work to, to, you know, like not latch onto that and not make that an excuse for how we choose to move forward. True, true, true. And I think, you know, a lot of times with our journeys and I'm listening to you, I'm like, Hey, uh, do we have the same father? <laughs> you know, sounds familiar, especially with the promises of picking you up, taking you places, not showing yeah. up. Um, and we don't realize because I realized l later on in my adult life um, that rejection part and how it affected me as a man. So I can only imagine how it affected you as a woman. But when we're talking about leading with impact and how we impact people, you think it's true that 
when we we can't really tell our story if we don't know the story that we we, we actually have correct or if we're too scared to really go into it you understand mm -hmm. like we have to be able to tell our stories from a place of courageousness mm -hmm. and not being afraid of what anybody else is going to say or think so like for instance for even me to i'm pretty sure that i have some people in my family that may feel a certain kind of way because of the statements that i've made today but in my opinion i'm like well where's the lie <laughs> like the fact that you have an issue with this is your issue not mine because this is my truth and i think that if so many more of us were 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 willing to be transparent and tell the truth about mm -hmm. situations then we would be able to empower others and even give others the tools to and strategies to help help them heal and heal ourselves yeah. but as long as we continue to stay trapped you know in a space of well, I'm scared about what people are going to think. I'm scared about offending anybody. I'm scared of what somebody's going to say. You know, you're not giving yourself the freedom to, to, to share your truth and to just be real. And you will always stay in a prison. You will definitely stay in a prison. Now, I have this theory that I call mind over matter mentality. Uh, when we talk about people having an issue with something that we say that's actual truth, um, I don't mind because it don't matter. You know, and I, I've learned how to adopt that. Stop caring about what people think, because I found that that was, that was the thing that was anchoring me to not being my true, authentic self is worrying about what people are going to say about the truth that I might tell or, or not tell. Even when I talk about my father, I don't talk about him much. But, you know, at times when I do mention being a, a secret baby, you know, people are like, oh, what you mean? You're a secret baby. Yeah. Nobody knew I existed until uh, 20 years ago. And they like, hey, how do you have a grown son? Well, nobody ever knew about that. But. You know, those those are parts of our stories that allow us to um, help other people. And I think when I look at my story and I don't know all of your story, but even looking at how you I've seen some of the videos of how you've helped thousands of people across the country. Um, what is the thing that you find most rewarding about what you do? Helping people to realize that there's another level of life to live mm. like you know like you so many people you know become complacent with the status quo the day in the day out right and then they they take a chance to invest in a program or to invest in to you know me coaching them and a lot of times it's scary you know mm. you have in your mind what you think is going to be but you're not really sure you know, you're wondering if, if, if it's going to be worth the, the financial investment, X, Y, you got all these things, but you have all these thoughts going on in your mind. But once they get in and start doing the work and not only doing the work, but they get the support of the others in mm. the program, then chains, mental chains, emotional change, chains begin to break. And I always tell them, I'm like, y'all think thought that you guys were just coming to write a book. Mm -hmm. But you won't leave the same way that you came. You're actually stepping into the next version of yourself, you know, mm -hmm. and, and that's what I that's what I love, like being able to to help leaders like really, truly, authentically embrace their next level of leadership, their next mm -hmm. level of living. Mm. What is, what would you consider to be next level? Because a lot of times people look at their life and they don't see them in stages. You know, they see them in, in a flat line. Uh, oftentimes we don't see it because we don't know what it looks like because we've never been there. So mm. once you go, once you take a step into the unknown, once you realize, you know what? OK, there is a level of impact that I can make mm. or you know what? I've been struggling with this for years. But I've actually been able to accomplish something in a few days or a few weeks that I haven't been able to do. So that doubt turns into faith because mm. now you begin to see the fruit and it shifts your perspective. You will never go back to the way that you were. You, mm. you begin to realize that things that you struggled with or things that you thought imp were impossible were actually possible mm -hmm. with the right strategies and the right information. Even to just be exposed around different levels of conversations and being able to see people who look like us mm -hmm. make a different level of, of, of revenue than 
most of the people around you make, you know, so you might be going to work, working your nine to five every single day, but now you're in a community where people are getting booked to go on national TV shows and right. people are, you know, uh, making sales and generating 10, 15, $20,000 per month. Mm -hmm. You know, when you may not necessarily know anybody that has made that money. So while that's not the most amount of money, right? It's a shift. You begin to see, you know what? It's possible <laughs> if they can do it there's a possibility and a chance that I can do it too, because now I see somebody doing it. So it becomes more than just a figment of your imagination or seeing someone else on TV. Now right. you're actually in a circle and connected to people and your perspective changes. You'll never go back to the way that you were. And that's the great part about it, right? You not being able to go back to who you was unless right. you so choose it. Cause we all have a choice, right? Right. Yeah. E exactly. And sometimes, that next level, you know, can be scary for some, but um, it's just knowing for me, seeing the transformation, you know, seeing people come in scared, fearful, a little bit intimidated, doubtful, and to see them go through a metamorphosis into, mm -hmm. you know, of, okay, these are the possibilities and I am a physical representation of what's possible. That, that That's rewarding for me. So, so, this journey you've been on, who helped you know that it was possible? Oh, my goodness. In the beginning or just all throughout? In the beginning. <laughs> OK, so when I first started on this journey um, to being an entrepreneur, well, I've owned businesses off and on throughout over mm -hmm. the years. They didn't work out. Right. And so I had always had the goal to write a book since I was in college. And I struggled off and on, off and on for 10 years to write it. Long story short, when I shifted my mindset into actually getting it done, I got it done in two weeks. Well, that was also the time that I was um, pregnant on bed rest with my son. Mm -hmm. And so what happened was that I was put on bed rest at six months pregnant. So I was at home all the time. Mm -hmm. And So in addition to me writing my book during that time over a two, two week period, I was also on Instagram and on Facebook more than normal <laughs> because I was at home. I had the time. Right. And so um, there was this guy, I think it might have been the, uh, a year or two prior. They had owned a t-shirt shop in the mall around the corner from my mom's house. And I had purchased a shirt from him. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, his store had, had since shut down in the mall. Right. And, but I was following him on Instagram and Facebook. So he started putting up these promotions about this uh, midnight Monday call. I forgot. It was called Sleepless Nights. So it was like a weekly entrepreneur call. It was David Shans. It was a weekly entrepreneur call. They would meet on Mondays at midnight. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times they would have special guests or they would just do trainings. And everything was you free conference call. You dial in a number and a pen. So I started attending those, uh, those um, Sleepless Nights midnight calls and I thought I was like what am I doing up on a Monday at midnight on this group call with all these people but they would have like people like Inky Johnson um uh some up uh, Kendall Ficklin like some other like really high level speakers Dr. Eric Thomas came in um Jeremy Jeremy Anderson and they would just say things that would shift, shift me. And then they would go on, on there talking about business as well. Mm -hmm. So that was, I met, and I met some great people in there that, you know, that still to this day, I'm cool with. Um, also around that time, Periscope, Periscope was hot. So Periscope was like the new live stream thing at the time. I think that might've been the first live stream platform. Mm -hmm. There was a young lady on there that I met. I don't know how I found her, but her name was Cece. And, you know, rest in peace to her because she just passed away um, in September of 2020. Okay. But I don't know how I found her, but I found her on Periscope. And she would do these 30 minute, 60 minute classes, like about how to create ebooks and just stuff mm -hmm. like that. Right. Or she would just get on talking about mindset hacks and stuff. So I would listen to her. I was at home all day. Right. So I would listen to her whenever she would go live. But then she started sharing how much she was making 
from these eBooks. And so she would show her SIM card. If you're watching, you don't know what SIM card is. SIM card is an online payment processor. So it allows you to pay through PayPal and Stripe. She was showing how much that she was making that month. So you could see like the November, uh, October 1st through October 30th, you know, 30 something thousand dollars. And I was like, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You know, I was like, care about the glasses. <laughs> I was like, how is this woman from Alabama who does not have a college degree, who was working in, who was working in a, um, in a convenience store? How is she making thirty thousand dollars per month every month via passive income? And I have three college degrees, and I'm not pulling in this type of money. I'm like some some somebody. I'm like somebody's got to explain something to me because it's not adding up. And whatever right. she's doing, I know that if she's doing it, I can do it too. Uh, okay, so listen, I, I read where you talked about leading with impact, but your impact was spelled with an E, and it looked like it was an acronym. Can you break that down for us? What impact means? Yes, impact is emotional uh, emotional clarity. So it's like you know being emotional intelligence so it's being able to identify your emotions how you're mm. feeling why you're feeling like that and getting to the root of that m is mental capacity so a lot of us begin to actually get overwhelmed because we start taking on more than we can actually handle and you have to be honest with yourself what is the what is your mental capacity how can you actually handle the load that you have like are you taking on too many responsibilities are you taking on are you volunteering for too much? Like, what is it? Even if it's like your home life, mm -hmm. like for instance, if you know that you have small children like me, you're running a business. Like if you're sitting up trying to do everything all the time, nine times out of 10, you are running yourself in the ground. Mm -hmm. So you have to be aware of your mental capacity and what you can actually tolerate mentally, emotionally, and physical, physically. All right. Um, P is the personal connection. So, being able to actually build relationships with others, okay? A is taking action, all right? So mm. we'll say that we're going to do a lot of different things, but it stops at the talking. What do your actions look like? How are you actually setting your goals? And what tasks are you going to implement every single day to make that goal can bring that goal to fruition right c is communication being able to communicate effectively with mm -hmm. others like you can talk all day but if people aren't responding to what you're saying or if they don't understand what you're saying or if you're saying in a way in which is not received then your message isn't going to move anybody and if you have those elements in place then it leads to t which is transformation which is where you set the stage for change to actually occur. Wow. Yeah, you talked about emotional intelligence. That's something uh, I teach uh, because I think a, a great deal of people, you ask them, hey, are you emotionally intelligent? Yeah, all day long. No, yeah, you're, you're not. <laughs> no, no, you're it's not. Like, it's really taking the time to assess, mm -hmm. like we were talking about, like going back to the beginning of our conversation, when you asked me, did my interaction with my biological father impact me in any way? Mm -hmm. And being able to see how and understand and accept mm -hmm. and identify, you know what? I have an issue with rejection mm -hmm. that stems from my childhood. Right. And sometimes I'm triggered and I can't always react, right? I have to respond appropriately because it might not be the other person. It might be me. And it might be one of my personal triggers rearing its head and just being able to be emotionally aware. Um, just going back to that conversation, you know, being able to be emotionally aware. And once you step into that level of understanding, wisdom and, and maturity, I, I believe that it 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 changes this, the landscape for a lot. Yeah. 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 I was just having this conversation in the clubhouse last night with a group of men and women uh, as it relates to relationships. A lot of people don't look at how important emotional intelligence is in a relationship. And I, I told them, if you guys start looking at people's um, 
that state of people's lives, you'll find that uh, a number of the people that you want to have in your life are not good for you. They're um, not. And it might not even be capable of being good for you. Nope. Not at all. Not at all. And that'll help you stop making the same relationship choices. Yeah, right. I, I believe that. Um, so so you had seven ways to win in life and business. I don't want you to give all seven of them away right now. Can you give me three of them? Um, yes. Yeah, seven ways to win in life and business. Number one is to have a spiritual foundation. So I am big on making sure that you are rooted spiritually Mm -hmm. Um, and making sure that you implement that every single day in your life. Like you have to be able to stand for something. You mm -hmm. have to be able to have some level of moral compass on which you live your life and in which you run your business. Like just point blank, <laughs> period. Like, not, like no debate for that. Um, so having a spiritual foundation. Um, another way to win in your life and your business is to, again, be emotionally aware. So be mm -hmm. honest yourself about what you will what what you will accept what mm -hmm. you want to accept so this is like having life principles this is having uh, life standards standards in your life and standards in regards to who you deal with in your life and mm -hmm. as well as standards in your business what are the type of clients that you want what is it that you will accept what won't you accept what what, what are the boundaries that you are setting you know, mm -hmm. in your life and in your business for people to either be in your life and or work with you in regards to being a client. And a uh, another way to balance your life and business, I believe, is delegating because we can't do it all. <laughs> if you try to do it all, you won't get you. You you will you will stunt your growth and mm -hmm. you will also stress yourself out. So on the home front, that could look like getting a meal prep service. You mm -hmm. could like getting a cleaning service to come in and clean your house a couple of times a week so that you can put your energies elsewhere or just relax and get some sleep, you know, right. um, or in business, definitely delegating paying, paying professionals to handle tasks that you shouldn't be doing so that you can free up your time and to actually operate in your zone of genius and generate more revenue for your business. So this means for all of my new entrepreneurs, that means that you can't do everything yourself. So you can't create all your own graphics or do all your marketing and create your content and create your programs. And just, you know, you're, you're not going to be great at everything. So pay somebody else to do something that's in their wheelhouse so you can take that time and do something else and make some money. Somebody saying, no, Jasmine, I can do it all. No, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can't. You can't. And I will say this, trying to do it all means that you are the bottleneck in your business and you won't make the type of money or have the type of freedom that you desire. Like the goal to having a business is not to be in business and have to work it every single day. Like that means that you have another job, right? Right. <laughs> so right. of course, while you're building your business, you, of course, you're going to be working it every single, you, you're going to be working it on a regular basis, but you, you should be able to take some time off or take a week off and still either and, and not have to worry about the operations in the day to day. Right. 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 Now you have this thing you say you can have it all. Can you really have it all? And what is it? So, yeah, when you have proper systems in your life and in your business, yes, you can have it all. <laughs> yes, you can. Um, meaning that you can have the life that you desire, whatever that looks like. You know, so I believe that success is different for different people. And um, you have to determine what that is for you. You know, what what is, what is success for you? Not what is it for the person that you're looking at on Instagram, but what does your best life like look like for you? Maybe the seven figure business is not for you because mm. it's going to be too stressful. Right. Maybe you're cool with making two hundred thousand dollars in your business and that or or. 10 grand a month, which is a lot for a good number of people. You still run your business and you can still pay your bills and be and, and build some wealth and you're good and you can do it without stress. You know what I'm saying? So right. you have to determine what it looks like. What is success for you? You know, like for me, I know that I'm going to be done working every day by two max three o'clock so I can have the afternoon with my kids. Mm. I'm not about to be tired on my computer every single day. You know, I'm not doing I'm not doing those things. I'm going to have a 
highly qualified and tra well-trained team to be able to run the business so that I can relax, so that I can take some time off or take a vacation. And we still generate revenue, you know? So you have to understand and determine what, what does that next level of life look like for you? So whatever that it is, that's not my definition, it's your definition, but you gotta determine what that is. Great answer, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Great answer. Well, listen, I've enjoyed this conversation with you. Uh, it, it's such a pleasure to, to meet you and have this, this type of dialogue with you. Uh, if people want to connect with you online, how can they do so? Um, and likewise, likewise. Thanks so much for having me on. I'm, I'm on Instagram at the Jasmine Womack. And I'm on Facebook and YouTube at Arthur Jasmine Womack. And you can find me um, on my website, jasminewomack.com. Yo, 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 yo. You're in the mix. The world's finest, man. DJ. Just like now. Watch it. I have the radio on the telly. <laughs>